This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Contingent liabilities and assets. I like to keep this close to the, what we did in the previous session, uh, which was events occurring after the reporting date, just to make plain the distinction. A contingent liability is a possible liability arising from past events. So this is not events after the reporting date, the events have occurred, but we don't know what the liability will be, how likely it is to be paid perhaps, or how much it's going to be, uh, until uh, it is confirmed by future events. So uh, we don't know whether, in fact, the, the, there's a liability at all perhaps. How should we treat this? And there are three kind of possible treatments. And we need evidence uh, that the treatments are reasonable. So first of all, uh, and, and for, for first of, so first of all, an example, uh, you are uh, being sued by a customer who claims that the products you sold to them in the previous financial year, the financial year that's uh, being audited, have caused damage. The first situation uh, that could arise is that everyone recognises, and certainly your legal advisors suggest, that almost certainly you will have to pay some damages or a fine. So if the present obligation probably requires the outflow of resources, uh, then you should set up a hard provision. You should credit liabilities, you should debit expenses. There will probably be a note as well explaining this. And to be able to do that, of course, you must have a, a a reasonable estimate of how much these damages are going to be. There's no point putting in a kind of random figure for damages. The second kind of layer uh, is where there's a, a possible obligation. Your legal advisors, because normally this uh, means relying on experts of some sort, or keeping along with the idea that you're being pursued through the courts, uh, you're... you're uh, solicitors will give a, uh, maybe advice to the auditor. The auditor themselves may go and hire uh, a barrister, a solicitor, to give them a professional legal opinion. But based on this opinion, uh, it's almost, let's say, 50-50, or, or even less than 50-50. Uh, there's a possible obligation, but we're not dead sure. Now, we're caught between kind of two stools. If we put uh, the hard provision through, uh, that mightn't be right. Uh, if we don't say anything about it at all, that mightn't be right. So so what you do in this middle pathway uh, is you disclose the possible obligation by way of note. And if the, uh, 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 the liability is remote, in other words, the legal advisors say these people are trying it on, they haven't got a chance of winning this uh, case, then there's no reason to worry any of your members at all. There are all sorts of things that might happen, but we don't worry about them uh, because the, the possibility of them happening is, is so remote. So there's going to be no provision and not even any disclosure. It can happen the other way around. Now, but before we get on to that, just, just, just look at the order going here. If it's a probable obligation, we take the hit. Okay, so this is in, in line with kind of uh, ideas of prudence and being cautious and things in your financial statements. If it's probable we're going to have to pay, we take the hit in the profit and loss account. If it's merely possible, we note it. Uh, and if it's remote, very unlikely, we don't bother anyone at all with it. When we turn to uh, assets, uh, then assets appear to be in the same three categories here. Uh, contingent asset, a possible asset arising from past events, its existence being confirmed by future events. So this could be you suing your supplier, your client suing your supplier, should they show money coming in from this supplier. And the tests here are slightly more stringent. Again, if you think about prudence, you want to recognise in a way losses as soon as you can. You don't want to take income or profits until it's virtually certain. So, if the inflow of economic benefits, in other words, money, 
is virtually certain, then the asset is not contingent. This is more or less uh, your client's uh, adversary, the, your client's supplier, uh, saying they've almost held their hands up and said, right, I'm going to pay. Or your legal advisors and their legal advisors in the middle of negotiations about how much is going to be paid. Then you can uh, debit receivables and you can credit, presumably against purchases or, or, or whatever the appropriate account is going to be. If it's merely probable, and remember in the last one, probable is what started us off here. If it was a probable contingent liability, you recognized it. If it's a probable uh, contingent asset, you don't recognize it, but you do make a note about it. So we don't show income until it's virtually certain. And if, of course, uh, <coughs> the uh, inflow is not probable, then we're not going to excite anyone's expectations here and there's going to be no disclosure of that at all. But these events have occurred. The, the event giving rise to these uh, potential liabilities or potential assets have already occurred, uh, and all we're doing is uh, 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 saying, well, it has occurred, what are the likely implications of those? Is it certain, probable, remote, is kind of what we're, we're looking at. And, and by and large, you have to get... Uh, information from uh, the, the commonest example by far on this is some sort of legal dispute. Whilst we're dealing with estimates uh, here, let's just look at how you would audit accounting estimates. Here we have uh, losses from legal cases as we've talked about, maybe infantry write-downs and uh, uh, so on. Maybe estimating profits from certain contracts which have a long way to go yet. And uh, what we should do as auditors is uh, see, well, how has management uh, identified what requires an estimate uh, and how has management arrived at the amounts. Management, after all, are the experts in their business. They know how to value long-term contracts or they should know because of their legal advisors how likely it is they're either going to have to pay or receive some compensation. So we could look maybe at previous outcomes, what happened in previous situations in previous years. We can discuss it. Uh, with management. We can look at board minutes again, of course, to see the sort of discussions which have been going on there. We can look at correspondence with the people involved. Uh, if necessary, this is another place you go out and uh, get an expert involved. If you're wondering whether or not this big building program, which isn't finished yet, whether it's going to result in a profit or loss, it depends on the uh, cost of the work still to be done. Uh, and the auditor would have to go and talk to maybe a commission, hire quantity to surveyors to go and say, well, I think it's going to take another two million to finish this. And sometimes if you wait a while, subsequent events, uh, the way things actually unfold, subsequent events will allow you to gain more information or sometimes even absolute information uh, about the outcome of these estimates.